say a peaceful life is a life that is constantly in pursuit of the knowledge of God. And I say it again, the higher the knowledge, the higher the life expression. The higher, now who is expressing the soul? Is a soul that expresses life, is a soul that will see life, is a soul that will lay hold on life, is a soul that uses life. That same, you see, the same soul can live like a dog. That same soul can be a swine, it can live like a swine. But introduce the knowledge of God to that soul, you'll be surprised how that soul will be transformed. Welcome to the Epistle Life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, good afternoon, everyone at home, wherever you're listening or probably watching from. This is Epistle Life um, from the New and Living Way Church, Lagos. And um, in our daddy, God's servant, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku. Um, I'm sure if you're a regular follower of A Peace of Life, and probably you are an, a member of the New and Living Way, or you listen from afar, you will be familiar with the fact that God's servant pastor, Pastor Emekai Guchuko, has been out of the country for some weeks now, though he's going to be back um, today, God's grace. And, you know, we are eagerly and, you know, with the whole of our hearts expecting him. You know, so he's not presently here, and by his instruction and that of mommy, Pastor Lilian Eguchuku, um, um, taking a piece of life uh, today in his stead. You know, mommy's prayed for me, and I believe uh, with daddy's instruction, you know, still from the book of Philippians, that, you know, will be edified. Let's say amen. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, God for giving us you know, life, keeping us alive. I also want to thank God's servant, our mommy, you know, uh, mommy Lilian Eguchuku, you know, who's also uh, here at, in the studio. And I appreciate God's servant, our daddy, daddy Eguchuku, who's on his way back to the country. Let's say amen. Uh, let's pray. We are grateful, Father, in the name of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the privilege we have to fellowship every time as your people, particularly the privilege we have to fellowship here in a piece of life. We thank you for, in your wisdom, in the last uh, uh, over 30 weeks, you know, you've led us in this present series, you know, as you stirred your servant, we studying from the book of Philippians, We've been so blessed. We've been so edified. We say we are grateful, Father, for grace you've poured towards us. We're grateful for mercy you've shown us. We're grateful for, you know, uh, instructions for life that we found from the book of Philippians. We say, blessed be your name, our God, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we yet study the tail end of this epistle at this time, I ask that your grace that is upon your servant, that the Ego Chuku, in the measure to which you know, I serve under Jesus, under Pastor Emeka Ego Chuku, that you would help me to yield to that grace, to serve in ministering your word to your people in the name of Jesus. Inspire me and help me to find direction of you know, how to go as per the emphasis of today, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you listen to the last uh, lesson, I listened to the last one, um, edified so much by it, instructed, and 
you know, if you listen, you know we are just at the tail end of this book of Philippians. You know, Daddy said, uh, thought quite some from the book of Philippians, uh, from chapter 4, you know, uh, verses um, 15 down to 19. And, you know, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, reactions from saints in uh, church and, you know, people deliberately obeying God as per the commandments that uh, this portion of the uh, book of Philippians, you know, exuded. So we're just going to uh, go ahead and take some other you know, verses in this book of Philippians, uh, chapter 4, verse 21 and 22. Philippians chapter 4, 21 and 22. You know, this portion of uh, the epistle, you know, like you find in most epistles, is salutation. And, you know, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel, he said, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away. He said, but not, he said, one jot. The word jot there is full stop. You know, that's a jot. It's not a letter. He said, but one jot of my word shall not go unfulfilled. So there is nothing, as it were, that you find written in the epistles that is there casually, that is there ordinarily, that is there without effect, that is there just to fill in the space. Nothing, nothing. The epistles are too weighty, you know, uh, a material, you know, for them to just write anything. The, the things that are there are pure spirits. They are, you know, um, you know, demonstration of the life of God, you know, penned down by the apostles as the Spirit of God stirred them, the Spirit of Christ stirred them. So let's read this particular portion. I'm sure you understand it, it will make a little more sense, you know. Uh, it says, salute, Paul is speaking to the Philippian brethren, salute every saint in Christ Jesus, the brethren which are with me, greet thee, or greet you, King James. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. Now, he's telling them, you know, he's written to them from chapter 1, revelations of things that are Christ. In some degrees, he touched things that are everlasting, you know, because he wanted to attain to the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus, so that he would attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Those are strengths of things everlasting. Now, he is now, you know, ending the epistles. Like the way he ended many of his epistles, he is now telling them that they, the Philippian brethren, should salute every saint in Christ Jesus. Now, that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, it, you know, we can easily just gloss over it and just feel like, okay, you just told them, you know, you know, salute. Of course, the word salute in contemporary English, you can replace it with greet every saint in Christ. You know, you could have just said greet saints, but it's greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Of course, it doesn't mean that there are some saints you can't greet. You understand? But he is saying something. He says, you know, salute or greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Then he went ahead to say, the brethren which are with me, they are greeting you. All the saints salute you. All. Everybody say all. Now, I have some people here in the studio. Uh, you know, so you'll be wondering why would, you know, it didn't say, you know, this, some of the saints salute you. It's all the saints salute you. Chiefly, they that are of Caesar, Caesar's household, that Caesar, who is, a, you know, the Roman emperor, he was able to minister to them. You know, if you read in earlier uh, chapter one, you know, because of the chains that he was in, the gospel prospered even in Caesar's courts. So he now said the saints that are in Caesar's household, they also salute. But the amazing thing is, both 21 and 22, we can deduce something from what Paul is saying. All the saints are meant to greet. All the saints. Now, what he said there is not a casual, lame statement. 
If you check it, for example, let me look for uh, one scripture that you can liken to this. You understand? Speak evil of no man. Now, that word, because of the weight of it, you know, because of evil, you know, when you say evil, you know, you, you can quickly register on our hearts that this is an instruction. Eh? Or, you understand, you know, uh, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your, on, your, you know, on, your, on, your, on your anger. We can easily see that that is an instruction. But, you know, salute all saints doesn't look like an instruction. It looks like maybe Paul is rounding up his, his, his epistle. So he just, you know, the way you know, just, you know at times, for example, we had opening prayers here some minutes ago. In some people, when they come for meeting, opening prayer time is time to gist. Because for them, opening prayer is not really, really the thing. It's when the word, the minister sits down and the word, they are, they are just there for the word, as it were. There are some people. Why some people, you understand, when worship is going on, that's when they go and eat. You understand, they go eat their food. That's when, you understand, they go make some calls that they feel, you know, that's the time they should go and do it. They're in church, you understand, you know, or they just catch up, you know, because they know when they share grace, everywhere will be, you know, you know, a little bit scattered. So they just catch up with some people. The discussion, they said, I will see you in church. So it's that moment. They just tell the guy, send him a chat. Let's see at the back. Let's see downstairs. You understand? And they will discuss for 30 minutes while worship is going on. Then when they hear, you know, the worship rounding up, they will say, we will see next week. <laughs> we'll continue our discussion while worship is going on next week. Because for them, that the, the worship does not hold the equal, an equal weight before them that, you know, the word holds. Now, worship is a, something we give to God. Word is what God gives to us. You understand? Prayers is a two-way fellowship between us and God. We need it more than he needs it. You understand? But it's a two-way fellowship. So some people, they are not part of the opening prayer. They didn't fellowship with God in prayer, on a, maybe on a Sunday service. They are not part of the worship. Then they now take the word. Then the moment the word is true, when they are giving announcements, some people don't know some announcements. They will be asking you, is there writing the vision this week? They announced it. <laughs> but they are not there to hear because... As the pastor is dropping, as they want to make announcements, they don't know. You know, they see a lady who brought her baby to church. They say, you, you don't come to church. They say, we dedicated my child three weeks ago in this church because the person is not there. You understand? Now, that same attitude, you understand, we carry it to other aspects of the epistles, other aspects of the life of Christ, wherein things that are weighty in the sight of the Lord that he moved the apostles to command. Some commandments are obvious that they are commandments. Why some commandments look subtle? But it does not reduce the fact that they are commandments. Now, salute every saint in Christ Jesus is not a suggestion. It's an instruction. It's an instruction that has many-sided benefits, many-sided blessings that makes our life in Christ not complete if we disobey it. I was talking with a dear uh, brethren recently, and the person told me, the person said, I am shy, I'm shy, I don't know how to relate with people. You understand? You don't know the person, like pastor will say, so I can say some things. He said, I don't, you know, I'm shy, you understand? I don't know how to relate with people. And the person is planning to get wed, to, to marry. The person is in the courtship. So I told the person, I said, you are shy. So when you come to church, you sit on your own. Most likely, you will not even greet people. You only greet people that greet you. You just come and you, know, you just get up and, pram, 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 and share the grace. You are gone. You understand? And you can be like that in a church for six months. Maybe people that know you are people who just see you. Maybe 10 people out of a church of maybe 800. 10, 15 people have greeted you. Eh, and know you, or, and most of them, they came to you. They just want to farm you, but you, you are always, because you concluded that you are shy, and there's nothing wrong with being shy, but if you are shy, just make sure your shyness does not make you break the commandments of life. So I told the lady, I said, you can't say you are shy and you want to get married, for example. You can't be shy, you have a mother-in-law. 
You have a father-in-law. You have brother-in-law, sister-in-law. You have neighbors. You, have a, you are marrying into a family. If you stay within yourself, you would have problems. That is wisdom, you know, for you to know how to... You know, I'm not trying, it's, not, it's not being outgoing, no. It's, it's the nature of life. Life lives. For you to go out of your way. You see, you know, you, you know, I was telling her particularly, for you to, you know, you see your, I told her, I said, for example, the day you visit your mother-in-law, you understand, if you don't want Satan to begin to put bombs that will blow in different seasons, you should run to her, kneel down, oh, ah, mommy, good morning, mommy, you know, I said, that way you, there are some evil spirits you will chase away. You will not have problem with your mother-in-law. Just by the fact that you, are de- you have used the life of Christ, you don't come to church. You understand? And you are, you can't greet brother A, you can't greet sister B, your brethren. If you can't greet your brethren in Christ, I can assure you, you won't be able to do well at your workplace. You won't be able to do well in, in other spheres of life where you have more difficult people that are not brethren. Let's say amen. So salute every saint is a commandment. Or let me put it in contemporary language so it doesn't seem, it's an instruction of life. Anywhere you are, can you say, say after me? Say, salute every saint. Salute every in Christ Jesus. is an instruction of life. It's an instruction. It's not a suggestion. It's an instruction. Now, it's not just an instruction of Paul. Some people might feel like maybe Paul likes greeting people. Maybe that's how apostles are. Maybe when you look at our daddy... You understand? God's a very reverend. Kyle, there okay. Daddy is a people person. Daddy can greet everybody. It's not thanksgiving. No, this is not giving thanks to God. It's not thanksgiving. It is salute. It looks like a military term. Eh? You know, and Paul, if you check that same verses 21 and 22, you see that he used salute, then he used greet. <laughs> you understand? So it's not a mistake. You will not say maybe what he meant. You know, salute is a military it's a military parlance. Where they salute, you know, military, you know, force people, police, they salute their superiors. You see themselves, they salute. So, so also is this instruction. It's not a suggestion. It's a instruction of life. It's an instruction that the spirit of Christ in the apostles, because it's not only Paul that said this. Other apostles also said it. It's an instruction that is coming out of the spirit of life against the hold of sin, against the mold of sin. Let's say amen. amen. So salutation, like Paul instructed here, is coming out of an outflow of the spirit of life. Let's say amen. amen. Now the spirit of Christ is the spirit of life. I made notes. Let's say amen. I had breakthrough. I made notes today. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of life. It's the spirit of Christ's lifestyle. How Christ lives. And how Christ would live if you were on earth here now. So what was behaving out of those apostles, Pastor Razak? What was behaving really is not their... It's not their Jewish inclination. It's not because, okay, maybe Peter, because Peter said the same thing in 1 Peter 5. Eh? You understand? You know, Paul said it. I think probably, you know, maybe James and John, one of the two of them also said it. It's not maybe because it's a Jewish tradition for them to greet. No. It's coming out of the walking of the spirit of life that is in Christ. It's the behavior of Christ to, be, to, 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 to salute or to greet. Let's say amen. amen. Now, I know naturally some traditions, some cultures on it also greet, particularly African culture. I remember one time our daddy, Pastor Mika, was ministering, and he said, really, I think he went is it to Poland or one of the countries he traveled to, and he was talking with one of the brethren there. And they were talking along the line of honor and respect. Then that person now told Pastor that Diego Chuko, he said, you understand, he said the thing about respect and honor, the way we Africans will bow, we greet. He said it used to be so in their culture. That the, their culture now that they call their parents' name, 
You understand? You understand? They, sometimes more them even at, attack, insult their parents. That it wasn't, it wasn't so, you know, years ago, decades ago. It's not part of their original culture. That, you understand, civilization came in and they lost that thing, that culture of life. When I say culture of life, Adamic life had honor in it. If we meet Adam, for example, let me give an example. So how many of us have, so for folks who are at home, maybe you have read, um, you know, uh, Prophet Rick Joyner's books, The Final Quest, The Sword and the Touch, The Call. In those visions, he also saw Adam. When you check the way, you understand, you know, Adam related with Rick Joyner, you see a lot of honor and respect in Adam. He didn't see Rick Joyner as one of the children that came out of his great, 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 just be counting great, 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 great. He would just be like, you understand, you that came out from my, one of my, you know, maybe one billion generation cell. You understand? No, he honored him. So the way God made Adam in the beginning, because God made him an everlasting man, Adam must have had, you know, the, the culture of everlasting life at a Adamic level, that would have honored. Adam would have woken up in the morning and greeted his wife. Even though his wife would have honored him, but he himself would have greeted his wife. It was coming out of a framework of life that he had. Let's say amen. Because why? All lives, as long as they are from God, they have expression, they have how they demonstrate you know, themselves. The life that is in Christ is a spiritual new life. But the things that we see in the life of Christ are higher demonstrations, higher manifestations of, that, of life that Adamic life was a type of in a lower earthly measure. So Adam must have been a man that respected. Let me give you some examples. Now, if you check the, gene the generations of Adam, if you trace the ge genealogy of Jesus in Luke chapter 3, they traced him to Abraham. Am I saying the truth? Luke chapter 3, when they began to say, and this was, you know, was the father of this, and this one gave birth to this, then they got to Adam, the son of God. A a Jesus came from the genealogy, that's uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 38, which was the son, you understand? You know, can you give me that place where he, talk, where he made reference? Yes, verse 34, Luke 3, 34. This is, they are tracing the genealogy of Jesus from Jesus' time back to Adam. He said, which was the son of Jacob? Which was the son of Isaac? Which was the son of Abraham? So Abraham was one of the great, great, great grandparents of Jesus in the flesh. Romans 4 says. Then, you know, Abraham was one of the great, 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 great grandchildren of Adam in the flesh. Now, when angels, two angels and God came to visit Abraham, how did Abraham treat them? I don't know whether you can help me, you know, bring it up. How did Abraham, because Abraham had a type of Christ. He had a seed, a type of the seed of Christ. But in reality, he was a great, great grandchild of Adam. So whatsoever, and Adam, of course, will be greater in life than Abraham. Am I saying the truth? Because he said of all born of women. None is as great as John. But the least in the kingdom of God, you understand, is greater than John. So John is greater than Abra Abraham. Abraham is lesser than Adam. Adam is greater than John the Baptist. So anything that we see in Abraham, any demonstration of life that God had worked in him, we see in Abraham, in a big measure, we'll find that same thing in Adam. So let's see, you understand, you know, when you know, uh, angels in Genesis chapter 18, you know, some, the, the Lord came to Abraham's house to visit him, and he came with two angels. He said, I read from verse 2. Can you give me from verse 1? Let's read it from verse 1. Thank you, Pastor Razak. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tenth door in the heat of the day. Verse 2. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the head. Everybody say bowed himself. Bowed. Verse 3. Let's read verse 3. Verse 3. And said, my Lord. 
If now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Now, let me paint this scenario very well. These are strangers. Everybody say strangers. Strangers. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Verse 2. Thank you, sir. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. It's possible when this visitation first came, when these strangers came to Abraham, maybe at the beginning he didn't know they were angels. Maybe later on, of course he was dead in his spirit, he picked it by reason of having walked with God that these people are no ordinary beings. But what struck and should strike us is the culture of life that Abraham had. Three people you've never met before, you've never seen before, they are passing by your house. You ran towards them, bowed himself towards the ground, and said, my Lord. How many of us will do that? Now, you can agree with me, this culture is not in the head. Am I saying the truth? Even just walking the street, you see young people, they see elderly people, old people, no greeting. We, we, we can't greet. We don't see, you be like, do I owe him? Do I know him from Adam? Now, you see that thing, it looks, it might justify, it might look justifiable, but I'm not trying, lying to you. It's a damage. That's not who Adam was from the beginning. Men in the beginning were men of honor. Read Genesis, read Job. They were men of honor. They don't have to know somebody to greet him. It's a, they didn't have Christ. It's a deposit of life that was from Adam. Now, even those who walk with God, they had that deposit. Now, even those who didn't walk with God, now, I'm sure our mommy, you understand, you know, you know, and many elderly people who might be streaming, you understand, or who might listen, who know, maybe 40 years ago, you're just walking probably in the village, you're walking on the streets. People who don't know each other, they will kill, greet themselves. Yeah. I remember a school in Ogu State, where you see old people, they don't know you, they don't see you. And Leo, Ekbeleo, and Leo, Ekbeleo, Ekbeleo, on the streets. You know, and for young people, because I go to State University then, some young people will not even answer. They will not answer. They are, not the, they are the ones who should have greeted. They didn't greet. Now, they were greeted by the elderly people. They won't answer. It's because of that thing, that not answering is not just um, civilization. It's coming out of a, a, a framework. The, the adversary had done something in man that does not know how to greet. You know, as simple as it is, as simple as it is, you're walking the street, you see a 70-year-old person. The person does not need to be 70 years, even if he's 20. And if, even if you are older than the person, you won't say, if I greet him, you won't answer. You greet, it's your life. You, it's like saying somebody else will not breathe, then because of that, you won't breathe. That's, that's how it sounds. You say, because, why, would I, why would I breathe? Because if I breathe, he will not breathe. He doesn't have life. So you can't leave it. But you leave it. So you find people walking. I remember I was talking to one sister one time. I said at times you enter, you know, BRT. In Nigeria, yeah, BRT is a bus rapid transport. Lagos State Government, provide, you know, did that for, they have special lanes for them to beat traffic because the cosmopolitan nature of Lagos makes it difficult for, there's a lot of traffic. So the Lagos State Government, under uh, some uh, three or four regimes ago, brought BRT transportation to east traffic. And it's like what we used to have, but better one, Molwe, those days. You know, some people will sit, some people will stand. Yeah? BRT is modern day Molwe. Let's say amen. Yeah? Now, the thing I want to bring out is this. Now, in BRT, you see, you see old woman using walkie stick. She's holding the bus. You know, there's not this thing you hold when you are in the bus so that you will not be thrown off balance. 
She's holding it. And a 20-year-old, this old woman is struggling with her walking stick, carrying a nylon. is holding the And a 20-year-old is on her phone. Eating chingo. And not, she, she's looking at the woman. She's seeing the woman. In some cases, people have been known to tell them, get up, let this mama sit down. You'll be like, what's my problem? Am I not paying for my seat? Am I not paying for my seat? Am I not paying? What's this? What's this? Yeah. Now, you might think, you understand, it's uh, enlightenment. It's death at work. It's death. It is destruction that worketh in the noonday. It is broad daylight madness. Now, Paul, in writing, so I want you to see that. Paul wasn't giving a commandment of men. It's not a commandment of man. It's not teaching commandment of men. It's not teaching us the human tradition. No, it's teaching the traditions of the gospel of Christ. So you see the way he landed it. It's weighty. Salute every saint. Every saint. Oh, it's not in EGFM. No, no, no. Is he a believer? Everybody say, is he a believer? No, no, he goes to Lost Church. He was wearing that uh, green thing. So I was just like, I can't greet him. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to be. No, 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 no. Salute. It's your life. You fall short. If you don't know the person is saint, you are excused. <laughs> Even though if you ask me, you understand, Bible says to honor all men. He said, do good to all men. It's good when you greet people. He said, especially those who are members of the household of faith. So what Paul is saying here is not a commandment of men. It's not a tradition of men. Paul, the same way he was saying servants, obey your masters in the Lord. Not, you know, with eye service. You understand? Masters, you understand? Treat your servants as, you know, knowing that you too, you have a master. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit to your husband. You see the same way he was giving those many faces expression of Christ. It is in that same way. He is saying here, salute. Now, you can, I, where you will know is an instruction is where you find people who struggle to do it. <laughs> Every instruction that is of Christ always negates our, our already constituted wrong nature by the time we are coming. By the time we get born again, we begin to hear doctrine. You discover, the, maybe you, you, some people, it's easier for them to greet the saints that they are five and six sweet. But there's some other saints that they are irritated by. <laughs> so you will know this is, is a big thing. He didn't say salute your pals that are saints. He salute every saint. Everybody say every. every. You are staying in the hostel. And there's somebody there who has done something to you in that hostel. Maybe you as a student. person has done something to you. So you just have that... You know, ill feeling, reservation. For the person's sake, you greet everybody together because you don't want to greet everybody one by one. Everybody, good morning. Because you know, normally, normally if that person is not there, you will greet everybody, hug everybody, shake everybody. But because that person is there, everybody, good morning. You just go. Because why? You know, there's something inside of you. It just shows that, yes, you, you, Christ's doctrine is true. Salute every saint. Every saint. Now, it's good to say some things, you know. Now, of course, I know our natural, you understand, you know, for example, in Africa, the Yoruba people, they are known for prostrating. They are known for kneeling down the females, the males prostrate. I think some parts of, other, many other parts of Africa, you understand, and even Nigeria, they prostrate. You know, some people, they will kneel down. They not down. I was a man who say Ranka Dede, who kneel down on one leg, you understand, and do Ranka Dede. You know, the different ways of honor. Now, those things in themselves, you know, we'll we be quick to, some people, when you, some people hear things like this, they'll say, forget it, it's traditions of men you are teaching, you understand? You know, it's not traditions of men. Now, every culture, Every tribe, every people, every nation holds different expression of God's life. Naturally. Satan did not make culture. Satan did not make nations. Sat is God who divided nations. In the book of Genesis chapter 11, in the days of Peleg, is God who divided tongues. 
and divided all nat nations of men on earth into 12 tribes, according to the number of the you know, children of Israel. It's God who did it. So nations, tongues, tribes, people, they are all God. It's God who brought them forth. What the adversary did was to corrupt every nation. He corrupted tongues, tribes, and people. So in some cultures, in some nations, some of God's deposit, the natural life deposit God put in man is almost totally wiped out. I remember where I stayed in Najegunle. I stayed in Najegunle, you know, almost 30 years. I'm not lying. What I want to say that I'm not lying with all fear of God. It is true in every sense. There's a guy, I won't call his name. <laughs> he beats his mother. Does that sound strange? He should. He will beat his mother and his mother will be crying. She will cry. Young boy in his 20s. And he will be talking to her like if he's talking to a baby. You will hear him talking to his mother. You know he's a jegunle. You know somebody will be like, why do you want two guys go and intervene? He's a jegunle. When you see somebody breaking bottles, stabbing, carrying knife, you want to go and be Superman? You need extra power. And if you don't have the extra power, just mind your business. He will beat his mother. You will be hearing him talking to his mother. Make you keep quiet there. He, he beat his mother not once, not twice. Now, I can assure you, that's a beast. That one is a beast. Something that is natural has been removed from him. It is lions that eat, can, can eat their children. Tiger that can eat their, you know, eat their mates, eat their spouse. Eh? Because something has gone wrong, even naturally with them. Some men are like that. Now, those natures that you find even in animals that are fierce, wasn't like so from the beginning. He said, sin passed as by one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Sin did not only kill man's spirit, it did not only enter into man as its own culture. It has its own tradition. Let's read you know, from our, 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 in our scriptures. Let's read 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. If you're there, say amen. amen. Verse 2. While you put your hand there, I will also turn to um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 15. We'll read it together. 2 Thessalonians 2, 15. 2, 15. Okay, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things. And keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Everybody say, keep ordinances. keep ordinances. Now, the word they translated ordinance there is tradition. It's the exact same word they translated in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. If you have a sword, just go check it. The word they translated tradition here in 2 Thessalonians 2, 15 is the same word they translated as ordinance in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 2. 2 Thessalonians 2.15, King James. 2 Thessalonians 2.15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our... Everybody, I didn't hear you say it. Can we read it together? Verse 15, I have uh, in our studios. 2 Thessalonians 2.15, can we read it together? One to go. Stand fast and all the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. So he said whether it is by we are preaching word or by epistle. Now, in where we read, read in Philippians 4, verse 21, 22, is an epistle. Yes, and what he was handing down to them there is a tradition. It's a Christian tradition. Some people will say Christianity is not a tradition. It has, it's, it's a life. Out of which flows tradition. If it's as tradition, it means it has a culture. Culture is the way of life. 3 verse 16. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6. I read, Now we command you, brethren, in the name. Now, what did he say? We command you. It's a commandment. Brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves 
from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received from us. So the tradition which he received is a commandment. So salutation, as simple as it is, is a commandment. Imagine when you are entering church on Sunday with this understanding. You understand? Good morning, no. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Of course, I'm not trying to say maybe you'll be like, I, I didn't bring that brother here. I have seen. No, that's not the sense. But you know, you just have it. That you, you know, you say the, the way he said, he said, Oh man, nothing, oh no man, anything but love. Every saint owes other saints greetings. Every saint. You owe other saints greeting, particularly when it's within your power to do it. Not like if you are not feeling okay, you have boil in your mouth, you have toothache or whatever. It's within your power and the person is within your range of greeting. You hold the person. It's a commandment of life. And for adventure, be the person, you go and tell maybe the person is going through a difficult time, there are thoughts in their head. You, be, you know, you don't be like, he's not greeting me, he's not greeting me. You greet the person. You leave and make the other person too leave. Now that commandment, that instruction, that the apostles gave is coming out of the spirit of Christ. Everybody says spirit of Christ. Any person who really, really, really learns Christ will find that there is something inside of them urging them to greet. You didn't hear me. You know there are some things you cannot plainly say. Sometimes when you do something, you say, show me where it is written. There are some things you might not see where it is written, word for word. But if you have spirit, you have the spirit of that life, you will know that this spirit demands that I do like this. For example, there is nowhere you find in the epistles where you say we should bow down to greet. You can't find one place in the epistles. But if you have the spirit of life that is in Christ, you will know. Maybe you see somebody else bowing down to greet maybe an elderly person in the Lord. You understand? You will not say, this is not Christianity. This is hypocrisy. Because you will know that the life that is in us can go to any length to greet, to salute, to honor. Let's say amen. amen. I saw, you understand, you know, I, I will listen to you know, that the Ego Can Mommy Ellen, they used to give example of one of the ministers in that the Ezekiel's church of blessed memory, Baba Baba Ezekiel of blessed memory. They say when Baba calls them on the phone, they are ministers, big ministers. When Baba calls them, they will kneel down. They are, they are talking to Baba. Baba is not there, he is on the phone. Now, somebody will say it's hypocrisy. No, it is life. Oh, it is heavenly culture, not Christ. Oh. Check angels in heaven. They kept bowing down to worship him who is on the throne. Revelations 4. They will bow down. The elders will cast their crown. You know, you go to some churches, you understand? You know, you see some old Christians. When they are worshiping God, you see some mama, they will take their gele, they will throw it on the floor. They will dress fine, white, and they will be rolling on the floor. A young contemporary day Christian will be like, oh, this clothes will be dirty. Because that's all he sees. But that old saint knows that the being we are called to worship, you, can, you, you must do everything to worship him. That if heavenly culture, that is not the culture of Christ, I angels bow down to worship God. Both the four living creatures, the four and twenty elders, the thousand times, thousand, ten thousand times, ten thousand around the throne. They bow down to worship God, to worship God. Some people will say, oh, it's only Jesus I worship. It's only, of course we worship Jesus. But you see that attitude of honor. If we don't demonstrate it towards saints, towards people the Lord has raised us, both physical, elderly, people who are 70, 80, 60, 50, who are older than you, and spiritually elderly people, if we don't demonstrate it, I'm not lying to you. The day you will see Jesus, you will not do it to Jesus. If you do it, it will be hypocrisy. After some time, you will be your normal self. Because if Christ is in a person, you will find, I'm saying it, you will find that, that there is something in you that wants to greet. It's just like a husband who probably shouts at his wife. He's learning Christ. It's possible. He shouts at his wife. Maybe Christ has not caught deep enough. The moment he shouts, 
he will know that something in him repels that action. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. That time he shouts and be like, are you mad? As he says it, he will, because he's learning Christ, even if he's not learning Christ, just his spirit alone will repel it. His spirit will be like, what? Then if he's learning Christ, everything in his soul, the measure to which he has learned, will reject it. That this is not us. He will need to work on himself more. He will need to subject himself to the spirit and deliberately disobey that law that makes him shout or raises his voice against his wife. In that same vein, I found myself there. Times, you understand, many times, when I'm supposed to greet someone, maybe for what, like it happened to me, where, where did I go recently? I was supposed to greet someone, you understand, you know, and I didn't greet the person. And something was like, you all should have greeted. I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I was talking to myself. Because why? It's something, there are things in a measure that I have learned that I know this is what is right to do. Now, you travel to civilized countries. Even when you greet them, they won't answer you. They'll be looking at you like if you are not minding your business. <laughs> That one shocked me. <laughs> you guys, you see people, you greet them. Good morning, sir. They won't answer you. you some of them, maybe they didn't hear you. Good morning, sir. They won't answer you. Why? They are wondering why you are greeting them. The life code, the spirit in them. The spirit is a spirit that believes in staying on your own. Mind your business. You don't owe me greeting. Neither do I owe you greeting. That is not Christ. Christ honors. And it is not human tradition. That's why when you see somebody who is rich in life, who is rich in Christ, he is a honorable man. What do I mean? He is a man who easily gives honor. Check John. John met an angel in the book of Revelation chapter 14. In a vision. Everybody say in a vision. Oh, everybody did not answer. Say in a vision. In a vision, he saw an angel. The angel asked him a question. Who are these? Which are, you know, Revelation 7, verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these that are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir. Everybody say, Sir. Sir. He's talking in a vision. Some of us, in our vision, in our dream, we don't greet. <laughs> I'm not trying to say maybe, you know, you know when something has entered you so much, like I remember, let me make you laugh. I remember years ago, in 2012, I saw a vision of Daddy, Daddy Egoke, and Brother Toba in Ifako. In that vision, I saw Brother Toba massaging Daddy's leg. So when I woke up, I just told myself, even in the vision, he's massaging leg. <laughs> Everybody say even in division. <laughs> Some of us, there are things we don't do in division. Because it's not, it hasn't cut deep. Now, it's the Holy Spirit showing me something because he get, passed a message across to me. But it, it shows that the Holy Spirit sees Brother Toba as somebody who serves at that level. Some people are something, by the time the Holy Ghost shows you who they are, they are different from what they are outwardly. Because that thing is not yet, it's not, it's not the way it is outside with the way it is inside them. It's still hypocrisy. It doesn't blend. So when a person is learning Christ, you first of all hear the revelation. The understanding dawns on you. Part of what it will do, many things, is that it will make you greet. I know one of the burdens in the heart of the Lord through our daddy, Daddy Eguchuku, in studying these books is, because they call it epistle life, That's, you know, meaning the lifestyle of the epistles being stretched before us so that we will see what to do. So the spirit of Christ is a spirit of greeting. <laughs> it's a spirit of salutation. That you wake up in the morning and you see your husband, for example. And you just look at him and say, sweetheart, how are you? It's not good, though. For a woman to see her husband and all you do is, sweetheart, how are you? Your husband might say, might say my husband doesn't mind. You mind. <laughs> you live. Honor your husband as Christ is being honored by the church. So if you want to have an idea of how you as a woman should love your husband, check the way the church generally, in the, how they honor. You know, you, know, you know, you go to some places, people, during worship, they kneel down to worship the Lord. It's not a commandment. I'm not giving a commandment. If that, but just look for what meets for salutation between you as a wife and your husband and make sure you give it to your husband. 
As the husband, don't just sit as King Kong <laughs> and be waiting for greeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you yourself, be quick, be the first to greet. Be the first to greet. Don't wait. They said uh, our wife should honor us. No, your wife will leave. You will maintain a consistent level of debt. You will just be engaging that level. No, you wake up and you greet. Because why? It's a culture of Christ. Let's say amen. amen. Then maybe as a sister, you are staying maybe with brethren. As you wake up, you are in the hostel. Don't just say, no, we are friends. No, no. You are training yourself for everlasting realm. Look at the person and say, Chiso, good morning. How are you? How was your night? It's your friend. You understand? Tade, how are you? Good morning. How was your night? Hope you slept, slept well. You understand? If you stay in your house with your parents, I know some people years ago, I can't say somebody, anytime the person sees pastors, they will kneel down and greet pastors. But in their own biological house, they don't do it to their parents. I said that one is hypocrisy. Eh? That means you are actually twins. There is a way you behave among brethren. There is another way you behave amongst you know, your family. I said, no. It's, you must be the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't be something in Akoka. Or when you come for a convention. Don't be something in Kosofe. Then by the time you go back to Idimu, you are something else. That means you are not really that thing. So when you wake up, you see maybe you are staying with the family. You're not, when you wake up, greet them. If they are Yoruba family, if it's part of their culture in that house, to kneel down and greet. Don't say no, 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 no. Kneel down and greet. If you are Yoruba, but the Yoruba family you are staying with, they don't believe in greeting. They just believe in verbal greeting. They, you understand? Then wake up in the morning and say, good morning, sir. Let's say amen. amen. Don't say no, 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 no. And how old is he? Is it because I'm staying in their house? He's 27. I am 26 and a half. You understand? His wife is even younger than me. He's 23. You understand? His wife will not greet me, then I will not greet him. You are playing with death. You are playing with poison. Eh? You should wake up. You see that wife that is younger than you? In that house, she is wife. She is the woman of the house. After the man, she is the nest in that house. As long as you are in that house, if you truly are living the life of Christ, you should wake up in the morning and say, good morning, ma. If something in you is rebelling, let it rebel yes, until it will die. Yes, let's say amen. amen. You know why? Those things, it is a kind of man that is fully Christ that will see everlasting life. Yeah. The reason for those instructions is not to make, you, make us spooky or make us one kind that we don't want to be. If we are not like the way these apostles painted in their epistles, they will be saying everlasting life, everlasting life. You'll be wondering why you don't hear it. In the 80s, Michael brought an, a, a message, the archangel Michael, for Kenneth Hagin. After the message, I heard it from Daddy Egoke. Kenneth Hagin said, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. You know, somebody will be like, what did he say? He's thanking an angel. No, because he's understanding. He's, on, he's not worshipping the angel. The angel is real enough for him to say, thank you. That angel, some billions of believers have passed the earth. He didn't visit them. Billions. If he, Jesus sends him to you, thank him. While you are worshiping Jesus, serving Jesus, thank you for sending Michael. Oh, it's not too much if you say thank you, angel, and forget about it. It's an art. It, you are really showing. Now, check John. He says, sir. No, you should have just said, <laughs> that simple question. I thought you are smarter than this. You understand? You know, you know, from the look of things, these people that are wearing clothes that are dipped in blood, his foolishness, if he behaved like that, would have robbed us of understanding. But he said, sir, thou knowest. Now, if you check, check the, this language. How do you think he said it? Was he putting his hand? You know at times you check words. Check the behavior around this word. Do you think he put his hand in his soda, in his waist, and said, sir, thou knowest. Do you think that's how he did it? He maybe put his two hands at his back. And say, sir, thou knowest. If you are there, you say he's, he's bowing to an angel. Angels are older than men. They made heavens before they made earth. They are older than men. Their world is older than our world. So if he said, sir, it's many, many understandings. Let's say amen. So we're still talking about greeting. That is not 
You know, it's not a natural thing. It's not cultural. It's not, it's not African tradition. When, if gospel, let me give an example. Many of us know this. How many of us know Pastor Jesh in Poland? If you meet Pastor Jesh, you will think you are meeting a, a, bread, a brethren in Lagos. You understand? The Polish thing is not there. Pastor Jesh, you see, you will bow. The way you will run and serve, Pastor, serve, you will just be serving. Because why? The life of Christ is there. So that life of Christ is meant to culture all nations, every tongue, every tribe, every people. My brothers and sisters, the world is not looking the way God wants it to look now. Heaven, earth is different from heaven. In heaven, heaven is a bigger place. Now, try to imagine everybody on earth behaving Christ. Try to imagine it. Imagine an American behaving Christ, even with his American tongue. Imagine somebody with a British accent. You know, you know, you know, good morning. Imagine everybody. That's God's dream. God's dream is that everyone, Chinese, everybody all over the world, God wants Christ to be our culture. He wants Christ to be our life. This thing is not for some people. It's meant for all men. But the people he came to first must do it. You know, when we do, when we do these things, we judge spirits. How are spirits judged? Our obedience. When we obey, spirits are brought under. Let's say amen. amen. So the spirit of Christ, when it's taught, when Christ's doctrine is taught, eh, it says, cast me not away, for example, from your presence, O Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me, restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and renew right spirit. Right spirit is spirit of righteousness. Eh? If spirit of Christ is in a person, that means the spirit of righteousness is in that person. It is right to honor all men. It is right to greet. Amen. Let's say amen. amen. Let me read some things from my notes that I made. Salutations or greetings are commandments or instructions of and from the life of Christ. Let's say amen. amen. Natural culture of nations of the earth that are coming out of men, out of, you know, are expressions, different expressions of sin and death. When you see when, you know, you know people can't greet, they can't honor, even in some places, you understand? You know, when, for example, these are extreme cases. When you see people rape, when you see people murder, kill someone in America, in different, they will kill somebody, put him in a suitcase, kill somebody, bury him. Now, the person who can't greet would, would degenerate to that extent. Yes. But a person, you see, some of the instructions they give us are anchors away from death. Yeah. Yeah. Things that will not allow us easily sleep into death. Imagine you have you are that act that always want to greet people. Whether they are on the street, as you are walking on the street, you want to go and buy bread. You see an old woman, it, you know, 70 years old, 60 years old, 40 years old. He said, ah, good morning, ma. Sometimes some of them are amazed. Yeah. Because it's a long time ago <laughs> that somebody they didn't know greeted them. Yeah. Even people that know them don't greet them. Yeah. It is strange in our days for somebody, to, maybe you see an old woman, you, he lives on your street. She's carrying a big bag here and she's struggling. Everybody will be walking past her. Everybody. Everybody. Nobody will help. Nobody will assist. Nobody, it's, you know, somebody, it's not, somebody will say, that's natural. It's not natural. Yeah. If men were the way they were, they would have done that. But much more, Christ, he will do much more than a natural man. Let's say amen. amen. In the same way, corrections, rebuke, instructions, commandments of life flow out of the doctrine of life that is in Christ, which is the life of Christ. In the same manner, salutations flow and ought to flow out of any person who is holding the doctrine of Christ. Meaning that at, at times, you know, you check symptoms. When somebody is sick, there are symptoms. So the doctors will check your eye. Sometimes they will check your tongue. I don't know what they look for in the tongue anyway. You understand? Maybe it's a sign of you are talking too much or something. They will check your tongue, you know, feel your temperature. They want to check if you are okay, health-wise. Now, in the same 
manner, we, we can diagnose ourselves. In the book of one of the epistles, he said, you know, he said, you know, judge yourselves whether ye still be in the faith. The beauty of Christian, the, the life of Christ, that you can diagnose yourself. Eh? You woke up in the morning because of maybe something, a brother, okay, that's a Second Corinthians 13, you understand, verse 5. He said, examine yourselves. Everybody say, examine myself. Examine whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Prove your own selves. Examine yourselves. So one of the things you should check in examining yourself, do you greet? I like that A. <laughs> eh? Maybe you just come. You know, you know Satan is evil. Some of us who might be very comfortable greeting our brethren in our church, but you can't greet brethren in another denomination. It means the life of Christ is not sitting well. It's either standing on one toe, and that will, you will fall very soon. Eh? You should be able to greet saints everywhere. You know, you see, it's, imagine Pastor Razak, if you are greeting saints, wouldn't he be a body some work? Eh? Good morning, sir. I'm not saying you have to greet everybody, but the mindset that as much as you can, you are greeting. Good morning. It will be a burden, but that burden, your soul ought to, ought to carry it to break a mold. Yes, sir. Yeah. If that, the soul does not carry that burden, it won't be good. I remember some sisters, by God's grace, you know, they stayed, you understand? Me, I used to have, um, you know, I still do it once in a while in, in our home, you know, uh, years ago, me and my wife, people that stay with us, you understand? Because we found out as far back as 2018, you understand, then we started doing it, that, you know, some of the things that are taught, you know, sometimes, you know, they might not be narrowed down to some homely things because of limited time in meetings. So there are some things at home that we feel, at times we'll be seeing the lapses back then, that this thing, ah, this person should have done this. You know, I'm not quick to correct. As a matter of fact, I hardly correct. I'll look for other avenues. I learned it from Pastor and Daddy Egoke. One of the last test thing, last test, last test, bad English, but you understand what I mean, that I would do, because I've seen it with Daddy, I've seen it with Pastor, is to correct. There are many ways to make people see what is wrong, other than sharply rebuking. Some people, you know, that's what they need. That's when, you know, depending on their frame, but that's the last, part of the last, for the purpose of saving. If the person particularly is not seeing the weight of the salvation, you now correct him sharply, you will run away. Then you lose the person in the name of wanting to correct. So sometimes, just look for a way to correct people. You can do like in Kapi, you know, there's this rat, they call it in Kapi. It will be eating your finger and you blowing you breeze. Sometimes that's how you correct some people. You are correcting them, you are playing with them until they get it. And you are praying for them. Yeah? So we felt back then that there are some things that, you understand, wonderful people that have stayed with us. God has blessed me and my wife with. I mean, wonderful, wonderful people. If it has one of the biggest things God has done for us, people stay, are the people that stayed with us till now. You understand? Many of them from Daddy and Mommy, Eguchuku. You understand? They are the biggest blessing, you understand, that have stayed with us. We count it a great privilege to have had all of them, both those who have stayed with us and those who are staying with us. So back then, the Lord stared in my heart that some of the things that are taught, they might not narrow down, for example, for example, maybe how to mop floor. They might not narrow down to that extent. So the Lord stared in my heart and my wife that we should make our time and talk to folks who stay in our house. You understand? So I have what we used to have what is called. I still do it once in a while now. Not, not like I used to do before. I used to have more time. Now I have less time. You understand? We used to have what is called brothers meeting. No, no, we're not preaching mysteries. You're just talking about maybe how to iron trouser. Having a sense of responsibility as a young man. You understand? When you see generator oil leaking, don't just walk past like if you know it's not your business. You understand? If you are like that. You understand? Even the Lord, there are, there are things the Lord won't trust you with. You understand? As a sister, you see that you know, the wall of the kitchen, all is spilled on it. And it's been there for three weeks. And everybody is just passing. Going for meeting. Fine lips, you know, fine lipstick, fine eyebrow, eyeshadow. You take picture, you do status. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> he, he's also Lord in the kitchen. <laughs> she, Dalu, thank you very much. So back then, you understand, the Lord stayed in my heart. So I would normally have what is called brother's meeting. You know, at times we'll have it till 1 a.m., two hours. 
I have all these sisters. I will have brothers meeting with brothers alone. And that meeting is full of laugh. As I am blasting myself, I'm blasting them. <laughs> you understand? No, you, you ask, you know, brother, I hope I used to stay in my house. You understand? Once I lock that brother's door like this, bra, sisters will be knocking. Open the door, what's happening? We say, you are not coming in. <laughs> Yeah, he said, it's not a serious meeting because I am not a serious human being myself. You understand? We we'll discuss serious things in a very, very way as friends. That's how that the Ego has taught us. You know, he has corrected us more as friends, even though he's our papa, our baba, baba, baba. He will come and play, but those things enter because we too, we want to, be, we want to change. They say he's a foolish child that you have to open all your mouth to talk to. A wise one, you say small, he will capture the rest. So I will go there, I will talk, we will laugh. One hour, we will be laughing, talking. And I will talk about this bed sheet. If you see this bed sheet, if you drop this bed sheet into a pool of fish, they will all die. Everybody will laugh. <laughs> but my message is communicated. You understand? Maybe if I come back, it's like that. I might now change the tone a little. The Abba now, Abba now, Abba, Abba. I can't put my head on this thing. What if somebody comes, you understand? And we all change. As I, as I talk to them, I see the Lord will put a burden on me to change. And I also would demand change. And before you know, we are both, we're all changing. I will have sisters meeting. I'll teach sisters, you understand? There are some clothes a sister shouldn't wear in the house. My wife has things, she talks to them. But I have things I, I discuss with sisters. Sisters alone, you understand? You know, I'll tell them, you understand? How you dress, you understand? Because I wanted those things that we are hearing. That my, my wife stayed with Pastor Daddy and Mommy Eguchuku for five years plus. I also served under someone, you know, sleep in daddy's house, that they go to sleep in daddy's case house, like that, but I didn't stay there as it were, just bump in and bump out, you know, but I was serving somebody consistently for five years plus, Reverend Vicky, you understand? And the Lord helped me in my own way, you understand? So I would tell them that there are these things, as a, as a lady, you don't serve food with a bro for a brother, I remember telling them with left hand. If you do it long enough, you do it to your husband. You want to serve food, you just drop the food on the table, see your food. I said, no. I said, first of all, we didn't fall from heaven. This is a Yoruba home. Even though we are not Yoruba, but it's a Yoruba home. When you want to serve food, use your two hand. Give, then bend down small. I say, I say, he does something to you. He bruises a, fem, a, a female pride. Because you'll be like, it's not your husband. If you won't do it to a brother, you won't do it to your husband. So, you know, we we'll talk, and we have many. I we'll would talk for years, 18, 19, 20, 2020. 20, 20, that lockdown year, plenty. You understand? Last year, a few of it, as it were. So I remember one of those days I now talked about, I talked from Thessalonians and Timothy about how a woman should honor a man. You understand? I remember back then, Sister Sylvia, you know, was still staying in the house. Sister Oida was still staying in the house. Sister Runke, you understand? We talked that, and there was a lot of blessing. I found grace because the Spirit of God would just put thoughts in my spirit, address this issue. You understand? And I just addressed that. Then after that, I want to say something going through that route. After that, I noticed... I just thought, I didn't talk about kneeling down. But I noticed, maybe they had a meeting. All of a sudden, all the sisters in the house, we start kneeling down. Then me and my wife, we called ourselves, we talked to ourselves. We started warning them. We warned them, we threatened them. But it didn't work. So Daddy Lamikora one time was talking to me years ago. He said, in this ministry, I'm talking about then. He said, there are three sisters that kneel down to greet me. He said, and two of them are from your house. <laughs> you understand? You know, I was happy. Happy that, not because the two of them are from my house, but that, that culture. You understand? And, I've, you, know, you know, I'm trying to say that, that you know, the things that we are being taught, you understand, you know, are meant to become life. We can examine ourselves. That's where I'm going. In the light of what is being heard, this particular emphasy is salutation, greetings. As a sister, how do you greet brothers? I know if brothers is your friend, yes, you know, you can greet brothers. But also, while you are doing it, have a mindset of honor. Have a mindset of respect. You understand? Somebody might be told, would I need down to greet brothers? No. Should I need down to greet pastors a thousand times? No. I'm not saying so. Don't quote me because I have not said so. You understand? You know, but I'm saying we should have a mindset of honor. Why? Because it's commanded. Say it's commanded. it's commanded. It's commanded. Disrespect, I'm reading from my notes, is an outflow of the spirit of the world. It's, it's, it's worldliness to disrespect. Have you tried going to places like banks, ATM center, 
Or you go to cinema. You just see ladies. You understand? Pride. First of all, there's a, you know, there's a way this world has framed people within, framed people without. They don't, they don't honor any person because really, the way the world has become so bad, a 20-year-old girl feels every guy around her wants to chase her. Yeah. So she doesn't see, she looks at you with so much disdain. But it's worldliness not to greet. How do I know? If the life of Christ, that is the spiritual life of, the, of life and peace, demands that we greet and honor, I can assure you, not to greet and honor is worldliness. It is carnality not to know how to greet. That you see saints, you see elderly saints, then you don't greet. Even when you feel the person hurts you. Because some people greet, but when somebody hurts them, they stop greeting. You see that time, that's the best time you should greet. You know most times, that's the, best, that's the time your nature is exposed to be broken. Yeah. Yes. That time that is easy for you to do, something is still hiding. Mm -hmm. But when maybe somebody's bruised you, bruised your ego, and you understand, you just found yourself, you know, all of a sudden the person is coming, you just pass like this. Me too, I've been like that before. That's the time they've revealed something. At such times, greet the more. That's when you press into spirit of change. Mm -hmm. So it's carnality, not to know how to greet. Not to know how to greet brethren. Thank God for being shy, but don't let your shyness stop you from being spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> Any shyness that stops you from being spiritual is not a good one. That you say, I'm shy. So you don't greet. No, it's not a good one. You can still be shy. It might be your nature. It might be timid. It's possible. Yeah? But don't stop being spiritual. Let your shyness be that of a spiritual person. <laughs> don't be a carnally shy person. <laughs> Let's say amen. amen. Okay, in, maybe in the next couple of minutes. I don't intend to push it too much. Let's look at some, you know, uh, expressions of salutation so that I won't just be hanging. Some expressions from scriptures, you understand, you know, of salutation. You know, Paul said, you understand, you know, in that book of Philippians chapter 4, you understand, he said to greet, salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints. Those, are, those words are scary. That apostle wasn't joking with words. He should have said the saints salute you. All the saints salute you. So all the saints which are with Paul. Everybody, maybe Paul, why the Paul was writing that epistle? This one will come, help me greet the Philippian church. You. <laughs> the other one will come, help me greet the Philippian church. He didn't say 90% of the saints. These people, they are too holy to lie. Wow. You know, at times, daddy is traveling. Some of us will say, help us greet uh, UK brethren. Help us greet. So when daddy is ministry, we say, some of the brethren in Lagos send their greetings. That's Paul. But this one Paul was writing. Everybody is saluting. Imagine maybe daddy, the next time daddy is traveling to Poland. I'm sure daddy will carry greeting. He'll be tired. <laughs> daddy, when are you traveling? I'm traveling next week. Greet Pastor Jesh, Pastor Chichi, greet Mama Oko, greet Sister Fumi. You understand? They are, daddy will say, uh, maybe you will come to the pulpit. I, say, I have received your greeting <laughs> by faith. <laughs> Let's say amen. amen. But this is a demonstration of our life. Let's say amen. So one good way to greet. Eh? You know some people will like, I will do teach people how to greet. If the Bible is instructing it, then it's good to say things around it. Let's say amen. It's good to, there's nothing this epistles or scriptures teaches that should not be emphasized. As long as it's there in the Bible, it should be taught, it should be emphasized. Let's say amen. amen. Verbal greeting. Everybody say verbal greeting. greeting. Greet people verbally. Now I'm saying that because there's another one I want to say. <laughs> eh? Greet people. Just say, no, I greet, I've greeted him in my mind. Thank you. <laughs> now say it. <laughs> eh? Say it, you understand? You know, okay, maybe the person is far, you waved. Okay, it's good. But it's good. Verbal, greet people. You understand? Greet people. You know, you have people call something, oh, yeah, yeah. Be cheerful. Be cheerful. Be happy to see your brethren. You know, there are greetings. Imagine somebody keeping a stern, frank, King Kong face. Good morning. <laughs> Imagine my answer you, there's nothing good in this your morning. <laughs> eh? So be cheerful. 
Some people don't know how many times many, when you, a spiritual man is not moved, is, is not bound by his feeling. Yes. Sometimes you are going through pain and you are smiling. Now the smiling does, it's faith. You smile by faith. You don't have to feel like smiling to smile. Just smile. Eh? I've been around our parents, our pastors. Many times when you say, Daddy, I'll give you, if, my, if, you, if you know the warfare is around him, those who are around him know the warfare is around him. If you know it, you'll be wondering if he's ministering, he's make, making people laugh. You'll be wondering. If you know the warfare, maybe Daddy Eguchuku grows, goes through. So for our pastors in the waters, you know, Pastor Thompson, Daddy Busui, Pastor Dimeji, Pastor Tosin, when they minister, you are laughing. If you know the warfare they are sitting on, but yet they see you, they will laugh. After laughing, they will be in sorrow. Why? Because a spiritual man, you know, by faith, obeys God, independent of his circumstances. Like Gary was teaching last week and two weeks ago, that Paul said, I have learnt both to abound and abase. Another translation calls it, he said, I, another translation says, I have learnt in every circumstance to be independent of circumstances. He's talking about finances. To be independent. So when there is money, it does not determine his mood. When there is no money, it does not determine his mood. Some people, when there is no money, you remember people call it Conrad. Bah! Even the children, they know when daddy does not have money. When daddy does not have money, there is a behavior in the house. The door is heavily slammed. Bah! Daddy seizes the remote. <laughs> His voice goes up. Everything he said with shouting. Live there! But when there is money, how are you doing? Ah, daddy has do. <laughs> eh? It shouldn't be so. Paul said he has learned in every circumstance, you know, in every situation, whether there is much or little, to be independent. It's a translation. He said he has learned to be independent of circumstances. In the same way, you, you can do so to greet. You can do so. You see somebody, you don't spoil people's day. Somebody is coming, all of a sudden, they just met you and their day is spoiled. Because they themselves probably they are not strong enough. Because somebody who is strong will not allow you to spoil his day. <laughs> Instead of you to spoil his day, you will fill your own day with joy. Yeah? He said, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. Not that one too, it's an instruction. <laughs> you know it's an instruction. It's not a suggestion. So how do you rejoice always? You do it by faith. You do it by faith. Rejoice. The flesh will not want us to rejoice. Evil spirits are there to make sure we are never happy. When we are not happy, they are happy. When we are happy, they are sad. So why won't you make them sad? And make Elohim glad. <laughs> Let's say amen. amen. Eh? So it's good to know that you don't have to, you know, stay within your feeling. Rejoice. Hey, brother, Pastor Razak. Good to see you. you. Maybe you are carrying one pain somewhere. You understand? Ah, this is a, 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 you know, good to see you. You hug. Then you go, you, go, you, go, you move back, you understand? And you trust God by faith. You don't use that circumstance going on in your body to distract another person's soul. Let's say amen. amen. Another you know, expression, and that, you know, at times someone will come for a meeting. They will say, now nah, greet the person beside you. You understand? Shake someone beside you. Greet three people. That's congregational greeting. And that's beautiful. You understand? But you can go out of your way. Maybe you are in church. It's not limited to when we come to church. You can go out of your way. You understand? You are in church. Look for one brother. You just see him. You greet him. You greet her. You understand? Imagine when everybody has that attitude. The atmosphere will be full of life. It will be difficult for mood to stay. The person who came to church with mood, this person greeted them, hugged them, rejoiced with them. While you see trying to recover, another person greeted, rejoiced. Another person greeted. Another one greeted. It's not just greet. Tickled him. If I, you know, the, that evil spirit that wants him to keep that mood, the evil spirit will be like, this place is too hot. <laughs> Let me go and take a seat outside. <laughs> eh? Because why everybody is full of life. Do you know, you understand, just by at times, you know, in rejoicing, you can be full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, ask, you know, that just, you know, you are not praying in tongues. Of course, when we pray in tongues, you can be full of the spirit. When you sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, you can be full of the Spirit. At times, when you just stay and shout, Hallelujah! Your Holy Ghost level goes up. It's a spirit of joy. So in, in greeting people, you can just be full of the Holy Ghost. Just be full of the Holy Ghost. Let's say amen. amen. So go out of your way. Call somebody today. Hallelujah. Call somebody. 
Maybe your call, like, there's one sister that came to our miss some time ago. She's not a member of the church. She with me, I didn't know her. How many people would pastors, our daddy, our mommy, and all the pastors know? I was telling daddy some two weeks ago how the church, you know, because I traveled by the time I came back, new new faces. I was telling daddy, I said, Wow, you understand that you know, God, we have to help you to pastor people. So many people the Lord is adding to his church to the praise of his name. Let's say amen. amen. How many people do you want to know? So this sister came to church. And she came to church, people didn't know her. She'd been coming from Two years ago, season, uh, uh, youth uh, single summit, she's been coming. And nobody knew she was coming to church. You know, some people, when they say first time I stand up, they don't get up. Some people are like that. You understand? She, probably that was her case. So she's been coming. Then she was struggling with certain habits. God has really shown victory now. And she's doing so great. I, you know, I talk, I talk with her often. You know, she was struggling with certain habits. And the habit got her here. You understand? You know, I think she was contemplating maybe suicide or something. Then another sister, who is also new in church, where she came from, eh, the teachings is that you must make friends. You must greet people. So she, she just came to church. And at the first, when she came to church, she sat beside this person who also just came to church. But she, she felt like she's new in church. Comes often, goes. You understand? She felt like she's sitting beside this person. So she just struck a conversation with the person and collected her number. So they would chat and greet. So one Sunday, the sister didn't come to church. The other one that was struggling with habits. You understand? Another Sunday, she didn't come to church. This one that was also new. Just chatted her. I didn't see you in church for two Sundays. What happened? And that was the deliverance. Now, if that lady didn't call, who knows what the devil would have done? Even though we are many. So at times, you're saying, okay, maybe I just want to stay on my own. You might be, you might be pouring some sand in somebody else's gary. You might be the only talking, the only connection between the church and that person. So pick your phone and call. Send a chat. I know somebody will be like, before you know, brothers, I'm not supposed to call you, you'll not be calling me. Don't worry, Holy Ghost would give wisdom to manage that. <laughs> Let's say amen. I know there is, there is nothing that people with infirmities who always want to overstep their bounds, but in a community of life, that thing will be choked. So call people. I didn't see you last week. Did you come to church? You don't know, you might just know. Then sometimes the Holy Ghost can stay you when you are like that. You know who to pray for. You just check up. You know, so that thing about not greeting is not good. Greet pastors too. Let's say amen. amen. Mommy, I might not say the truth. Pastors need encouragement. Yes. I remember one time, years ago, I was in Joss. Work was too much. You're in Lagos, you are working. You are, so when you go outside Lagos, pastor will say, this is why you are traveling for missions. Rest. Sleep. Off your phone. Sleep. And that's what he does. You know, so so it's, at that time, the workload for that level, God has helped me. I know how to manage it better with counsel from Daddy Ego Chiku, Daddy Ego Ki. I know how to handle it better. But at that time, you understand, the workload was much. So I began to grumble. Underneath, I was grumbling. And part of my resolutions then, I'm talking as far back as maybe 20, uh, maybe 17 or so, or 18. I just made up my mind. I said, I will not pick any lax to the school again. <laughs> that was, I just made up my mind. Because why? Anytime anybody just see you, there's always something. There's a counsel. There's a preaching. So nobody is even trying. I've not, then I, nobody will say, how are you? Nobody. Now, it's carnality for me to be expecting it somewhere. Eh? It's carnality, to be frank. You understand? Because you are serving the Lord. He is also training us. But it's also good not to allow the devil use. You understand? So I just made up my mind. I will not... So anytime Unilax will be calling me back then, five or zero about years ago, I'll be seeing the call like this. I'll be happy. So I won't pick this call. I won't pick it. You people will not kill somebody. <laughs> I won't pick it. And I will just, you know, I will be, somebody will say, I need to talk to you. I'll say, go and talk to this pastor. Talk to pastor, this, 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 this. You understand? You know, because and what now made it enter, mommy, what made it enter very well was that in that season, I was not understanding what he thought. <laughs> so the devil was bombarding me, preacher. <laughs> you know, it will be bringing some scriptures to condemn me. You understand? Lest after I have preached to others, me, I will be a castaway. Ah, ah. 
Reverend will be preaching. I'll be looking at this man. I will not understand what is being said. What, what is being said now? You understand? Then before you know, as they share grace, three people are standing before you. I want to see you. I'll just be like, no, I'm not available. But one, 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 of, one, one of our brothers who's a prophet, you understand? He just, you know, you know, I went to minister somewhere, so he met me there. You understand? He said I should follow him. We should just go to his house. Mommy knows the person, you know. And I followed the person to their house. And we just got talking. The Spirit of God just came upon him. And he said two or three things. The first thing he said, he said, I can see you. I can see you. You are running. You are running from Uniland students. You are running. Ah, I just say, I say, I walk, walk, walk. what do you call me, Sita? <laughs> he said, the Lord said, I should tell you. He is the one that positioned you to be ministering to them under your pastor. Don't run. Don't run. Ah, ah. I had to obey that instruction painfully. You understand? Then I will forget some calls that some people will call you. Some people will just call you in the midst of discouragement. Sister Ronke, you know, Otsu Naike now, you know, that's Brani, you know, in Korodu Church. She just has that grace. She will just call at the right time. I will be so discouraged back then, yes. Particularly when I'm in missions. When you're in Lagos, you will not have space to think of your problem. <laughs> you will just be walking, walk, walk. But back then, things are better. And I have grown to know how to manage it. Back then, when I go to missions, remember I was in the bed, thoughts, bombardment. She will just call at the right time. And when she calls, she just asks the right words. She will just say something, bodies will just lift. And another person that does that is Sister Fumi in Poland. They will just call. So those calls are like the pour cold water to your dry land. So it's good at times. Prayerfully descend out to, you understand, greet your pastors. Let's say amen. amen. Pray for your pastors. Pray for our daddy and our mommy. And be, you understand, some people, when you see their call as a pastor, you understand, you just quickly pick it. Because they will call you, not because they want to one special counsel. There's nothing wrong, call pastors, and they, it's the responsibility of pastor. They hold you to Jesus and you to attend to you. But it's also good for you to have words of encouragement. Greet them. How are you doing? How is your wife doing? How is the children doing? Don't assume they are supermen. Like that is coming back today now. Some people, bang, 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 bang. You understand? I want to come and visit you. Let daddy rest. Now let me look at the camera. <laughs> I am not giving a commandment to, but if daddy does not call you, don't come. <laughs> Say amen. amen. <laughs> if you are not called upon, don't come. You will see daddy in meetings. Let's say amen. amen. Praise God. Now, one, another one, and I'd like to emphasize this one. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 16. I begin to round up Romans 16, verse 16. Romans 16, 16. Can we read it together? One, two, go. Okay, okay, let me wait for everybody to be there, both people at home. Romans 16, 16, and um, 1 Corinthians 16, 20, we'll read them. Romans 16, 16. Want to go with an holy kiss? Romans, uh, First Corinthians sixteen twenty. Somebody sent me a chat, and I said, I say I greet you. <laughs> Please, I beg you, don't feel my phone. <laughs> Do the first time, the Baba greeting. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 16, 20. One, two, go. Let's read. Okay, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 20. Let's read. One, two, go. First Peter 5, verse 14. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 14. One, two, go. Keys of charity. Let's say amen. Now, I've heard of, you understand, in years past, in some quarters, they, some people use these scriptures. <laughs> they say, greet you know, with an holy kiss. <laughs> then you see brethren, <laughs> a brother and a sister, lock mouth. You understand? And say, it's, the Bible said, greet ye one another. You know, it has to be holistic. You understand? The apostles say, greet ye one another with an holy kiss. So you see a brother and a sister. Kissing. Ah, brother, 
Brother Dash 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 and Sister Q, what are you doing? He said, is it not written <laughs> that we should greet one another with an holy kiss? Now, if you check the context of those words, yeah, the word that's translated holy there is separated. Agios. He's saying, greet one another with a kiss born out of the mindset of our separation. When he said holy kiss, he's not talking about kissing on the mouth. Definitely. No, no husband has a right to kiss any sister in the mouth that is not his wife. No wife has a right to kiss any other man or her husband, single or married, on the mouth that is not her husband or single. Eh? When he said with the holy kiss, Acts chapter, you understand, 20 verse you know, uh, 37, you know, they gave a, 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 an example of that. You know, Acts 20 verse 37. Acts 20, 37. And they wept, and they all wept sore. This is the official elders when they saw Paul off to the you know, coast, the seaside, when Paul was about to take a ship out of Ephesus, having ministered to them for like two or three years. So they, he now gave them instructions, you know. You know, I, I commend thee to God, the word of his grace, feed the flock of God which he purchased. All of that, he said it by the seaside. So while he was about leaving, they all wept sore and fell on his neck and kissed him. They weren't kissing him in his mouth. They kissed, no, you can't, you know, you know, jaw to jaw, yes. You understand? Now, it's a sense of holiness. Now, some people can jump to the, check, check where they put those epistles, those, these instructions. It's the last verses. Everybody saying last verses. Last verses. Somebody who has not used the lights, <laughs> who does jump to the last verse, you will tell you will misabuse it. <laughs> He did not pass through chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Then he wants to do kiss of charity. <laughs> he will spoil it. Eh? So, you know, it's safe in the, you know, among some people. Just a hug is good. And a holy hug. Everybody say a holy hug. <laughs> because as a pastor, I have had sisters, you understand, who will say there's a way a brother hugged me. I'm not comfortable with it. Then I tell her, don't hug him again. Shake him. Shake is okay. Any handshake that is beyond shoulder <laughs> is you know, calls for questioning. Yeah? So you understand? You just do your best. You, 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 you know, you hug. You know that if, if, you have the, if you have life in view, there are some things you won't do. When some people abuse certain privilege, life in, is not strongly in view. It's not strongly in view. You understand? As a sister, you understand? You know, you hug, you know, there is no rule to it. But from your holiness, from the law of Christ that is in you, you understand, live from there. No rule. Everybody say no rule. But the one command that I will put, it's not in the Bible. Just blame me for it. Is that make sure, you understand, you know, you do it with fear of God. Why we hug? I mean, I hug. You understand? It's even recently I started hugging. If you know me very well. <laughs> it's recently. It's not been up to two years. I shake people. I can hug brothers, but sisters, I shake. It's just barely two years ago, you know, that I began to put up that, <laughs> you understand? You know, because I just felt like I like being careful. And it's good to be like that, you understand? So now, oh, you will give your sight, oh, you know, greet you, you understand? And that's beautiful, with innocence, with purity. If the light of Christ walks in you, the people that gave this instruction are people who have used life. Because a person who has used life will not abuse it. If you throw it out, that everybody who probably has not grown, because the person is a Christian, kiss, you know, you know, kiss one another with a holy kiss. It, you will see things you, are, you never believe will happen. It's like giving a child, you understand, you know, a, a key, the car of a key, the key, car of a key, the key, uh, key of a car. You will misuse it. But if the fear of God is there, even if you've not known all of Christ, because I know because some will be like, that means I can't hug my brother until I have known Christ. No, you can hug your brother. But he called it holy kiss. It's a kiss of faith. Say kiss of faith. Meaning you are, that kiss is coming from an understanding of the life of holiness. So you cannot only be kissing eh, and wanting to emphasize kissing where you cannot forgive. It's a well-rounded life. 
So if you are still struggling with some things, just shake the person, give the person side hug to be on the safe side. Again, I say no rules. Let's say amen. amen. Because that's, you know, those are the portions of the, you know, remaining in the book of Philippians that daddy left, and we needed to de deal with them, you understand, roundedly. Let's say amen. amen. It's good, you know, you know, you know, you find, you know, in, we got brother, brother Razak. You know, though I'm a pastor, but I'm still a brother. Those are part of greeting. So if they greet me, brother, talk, but I don't feel like you're derogatory. No. A brother is of a greater pedigree than a pastor. Many of us know. Yes, sir. No, everybody didn't know. A brother, a sister in scriptures is of a greater pedigree yes. than apostle, prophet, pastors, teachers. Yes. 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 For those who join it, you said they are, I am of thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophet, that have the testimony of Jesus. Those brethren or brothers that our testimony are beings of the most holy. Uh -huh. Fivefold, they end at the veil of the, between the outer court and the holy place. Those five pillars, that's where fivefold end. Except special apostles that have grace to go to the peak of the holy place like Paul. And special apostles like John that have grace to go into the holiest of all. Except from that fivefold, their boundary is between the outer court and the holy place. But brother, nature of a brother goes beyond that. So if you are a pastor and somebody calls you, you understand, brother, talk back, don't feel bad. Because you are a brother. The Kenneth Hagin and the people in the Bible belts, they call them. Till tomorrow, they call themselves brother. You will hear Bishop Oedepo talk about Reverend Kenneth Copeland. He will say brother Copeland. Then Reverend Kenneth Copeland, who is a, you know, a mentor, you know, a father, if you go to Bishop David Oedepo, will say, I told brother David. Wow. It does not reduce you. It's honor to be a brother. You know, Jesus, our Lord, is a brother. Yes. He said he is not ashamed to call them. Brethren. So brethren can reach where apostles can't get to. They can reach where prophets. So if they say brother, don't feel bad. Yes. Just they, they just crowned you with a beautiful honor. Yes. Somebody sends a chat and say, dear brother. You, you, know, you didn't see dear pastor T. <laughs> you just say, dear brother T. It's honor. Amen. So let's reorient our mind with that. So when you hear, brother, don't feel bad, and maybe he's not recognizing. Is he trying to say, I'm not a pastor? You are a pastor, but you are a greater, you have a greater, you know, privilege in being a brother. Let's say amen. amen. So how many of us are brothers? Let me see your hand. How many of us are sisters, sisters, brethren and sisters? We are, you understand? So it's a greater honor. It's all in the spirit of salutation. So when you hear, brother Razak, brother Razak, don't feel, am I not a pastor again? Is he trying to say, I'm not a pastor? No, you are a pastor. You understand? But you are, it's a greater honor. If Jesus says we are his brothers. Mm. Ah. Wow. Let's say amen. amen. Now you're rounding up. We're done today. God's grace. The essence of today's emphasis is to encourage us to know and note that greetings or salutations are commandments or instructions that we ought to consciously obey as part of our lifestyle of obedience to the doctrine of Christ. Let's say amen. amen. So a part of our lifestyle of obedience is not just be, just let's start practicing it. How many of you will be around that? You go, okay, it's always greeting people. Pele? Pele? Talk about Pele? TJ? Pele? Hope you are good. Daddy can just call you from, maybe he's outside the country, just call you just to greet you. It's plenty of life. When it's people that can't greet, it shows the level of their life. That they are, they, 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 it's, those are things you used to know when people have life plenty. Mommy Ellie will greet you and greet you and greet you. She just saw you when she passed like this. She greeted you. When she's coming again, she will greet you. I always take note of our mommy, mommy, mommy Lillian. Even people who are, you know, you know, she's so much older than to be there. She will almost, like if she wants to kneel down to greet them. It's a nature. I mean, I don't know that the Lami Kora. Yeah. Eh? That Lami Kora will bow to greet every person. It's a culture. It's a demonstration of life. May we increase in that life in the name of Jesus. Can we give thanks to God this afternoon for his word? Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's bless his name. Let's bless his name. Can we pray everywhere that the Lord would help us to, to do this this commandment. It's a commandment. It might seem subtle, but it's a commandment. 
is an instruction. It's, a, it's an expectation. It's an outflow that should come out of the life of Christ in us. That in every place we are not doing it as we ought to. That the Lord would have mercy. The Lord will bring forth a spirit of instruction, a spirit of grace in our midst. That we will find grace. We will open our mouth and we will greet our parents, not only brethren. We will greet our neighbors. We will greet our landlords. We will greet our colleagues. We will greet our friends. That we will, the culture of greeting, the culture of salutation, which is an outflow of the spirit of life that is in Christ, would abound in us, would abound in our community, would abound amongst us. That we will demonstrate it. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you thanks, our Lord, for your word. We thank you for how you've helped us. We receive these graces from your word in the name of Jesus. Beyond what has been said, and in any way it might not have been well-rounded, that your spirit will round it up and explain it in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for your servant, our daddy, who is on his way back to us. We thank you for the success of his trip. We thank you because he will meet us safely and will yet much more be blessed even by much more grace and spoils of war from this trip that you've taken your servant to for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next week, where you see our daddy, you understand, coming with great grace, great power in a peaceful life. I say you should have a great day and a great you know, week ahead. Thank you. Words to mix with blood in me. Let it become my reality. Take my mortality from me. Father, cause this word to be the life I lead. I will do faith, hope, and charity. Till Christ is all that's left of me. Singing glory, honor, power, and salvation to Jesus. I preach the good, good things to come. I love this part. We will be thoroughly exercised in all that we are hearing till we become just like. Come on, make a joyful noise to Him. Hallelujah.